These products may not be necessarily for everyone, but if you're say an IT professional or perhaps you're a tech enthusiast, these devices may be of interest to you. You may be confused as to what these products are. Well, both of these are hard drive enclosures by IODD. They're not your typical drive enclosures though. Both of these hard drive enclosures were made with a greater purpose in mind, IT guys that work in offices. And yes, while both of these devices cater more towards the IT crowd than the typical home user, there are some very useful features that you can use on the Steam Deck. Let's start with the IODD Mini. This device comes with a 1TB NVMe SSD already inside of it. It's meant to house SSDs that are about 42mm of length. It's a pretty uncommon size, so you probably won't have one lying around your house unless you work in laptops and stuff. And you know what? There it is. This kind of reminds me of those old college clickers we used to use to answer questions. And as you can see here, there's a nice material surrounding it. A nice bag material. I don't know what the material is, someone can tell me what it is, I'd be much appreciated. You can actually pop the hood off of this to remove it, but there's a little sticker that says it voids your warranty. Do so at your own risk, though I do believe they sell versions without an SSD inside of it, so you can just put one in yourself. I had my fun here, so let's look at this product right here. This is a carrying case, and IODD were gracious enough to send this to me alongside the other two products. It's pretty sturdy. I don't know if it would survive being like ran over a car or anything, but I would say it's pretty sturdy. I could put this in my backpack without any fear whatsoever though. So all you gotta do is stuff this in there, and we can go looking for the wire. As you can see here, the wire is in this box as well. You should be careful with this cable because it's somewhat of a rare cable. It's a micro USB 3.0. As you can see here, it's a micro USB with an extra prong on there. You probably don't have one of these lying around in your house, meaning you'll have to buy one from Amazon if you lose it. I kind of wish they made a version of the mini with USB Type-C, because USB-C is great. You should USB-C all of the things. USB-C is of the future, don't you know? Why don't we go ahead and stuff the cable into the carrying case? And wow, look at that, just stuff this cable in there and you've got a portable setup. Now let's open this bad boy up. This is the IODD ST400. It's a bigger enclosure, meant for a 2.5 inch drive. Preferably an SSD, but you can also use a laptop hard drive if you so desired. IODD didn't give me an ST400 with a drive already installed, so we'll have to provide our own drives, and thankfully I've got some drives lying around here. All you've got to do is slide it out and it opens just like that. It actually requires a bit of force to get it open, so do keep that in mind when you try to open it. And there you go, you've got our SATA slots right there. And so we're ready to stuff an SSD into this enclosure. Thankfully I've got one of these Samsung SSDs just lying around. So all you gotta do is put it in and push it in and there you go. And swapping drives is as easy as taking it out. So there we go, we've got two drives ready to go. This one actually has a USB Type-C port. Kinda wish the Mini also had a Type-C port, but that's whatever. You can basically plug these drives into whatever computer you want and it'll recognize itself as a drive. But to do some of the more advanced features, you will need some setup. Here are some basic features you may be interested in. You can mount virtual hard drives as their own flash drives or removable hard drives. You can mount ISO files as an actual disk drive, in this case a Blu-ray disk drive. The computers even recognize it as a disk drive, albeit a removable one but still a disk drive nonetheless. You can actually encrypt the entire drive. You would use a 4 to 15 digit code. Of course, encrypting your entire drive will wipe the drive, so be sure to back everything up. You can also set the entire drive to be write protected. You can mount up to 5 virtual drives if so desired. You can actually pick which ones are write protected and which ones aren't. Of course, the emulated optical disk drive functionality will be write protected. You can also determine which virtual drives are mounted as flash drives and which ones are mounted as removable hard drives. And yes, there's a difference between the two. The IODD ST400 also has the same exact functionality, it's just a different form factor. If you want a more detailed explanation, you should check out their wiki page. Links in the description down below. This is a must read. This information is absolutely vital. 
This will teach you everything, the ins and outs. My personal recommendation is you start with the firmware update. You can download the firmware from IODD's website. You'll want to select the correct one for your device. In this case, we're using the IODD Mini. And yes, the updater utility requires the use of Windows. You just press scan and you press update and it should update. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at some features. One such feature that this product has is the ability to create multiple different virtual USB drives. You just need a program that can create fixed VHD files. IODD has one for download, but you can also use VirtualBox as well. The device also supports RMD files, which are the same thing as VHD files, but you would rename them instead. I'm not sure why it does this, but it's just something that it supports. You would then use the keypad to emulate whatever virtual drive you want. In this case, we created a Steam OS virtual flash drive. And once you use the keypad to select whatever drive you want, it'll immediately show up in your operating system. In this case, it's Windows. So yeah, it'll ask you to format the drive. Go ahead and format it to whatever you want. It really doesn't matter what you format it as because we're going to have to format it again anyways. We're just going to go with FAT32. We're going to name this SteamOS, and you want to take a guess as to why? That's right, we're going to use Rufus to turn this virtual flash drive into a bootable virtual flash drive. In this case, we're going to select the Steam Deck recovery image file. That way, in case anything happens to our Steam Deck, we can use the IODD device to refresh it, or perhaps even reinstall SteamOS. But that's a bit boring though. How about something a little more complex? Let's create a Windows to go drive. This will let us plug this in to the Steam Deck and run Windows whenever we want. All you need to do is create a brand new VHD file. You can use VirtualBox to create a VHD file, or you can use this utility by IODD. Of course, this utility is Windows only. And we're going to use this utility to create a VHD file. So the only thing you need to worry about is the size. We're going to make this a 256 gigabyte drive. Press create and you should be good to go. Be sure to mount your virtual drive. Renaming it to RMD is totally optional. From there, you'll want to use Rufus to create a Windows to go installation file. In this case, you'll want to list USB hard drives and then select your drive. Be sure to not select your IODD drive. You can name your volume whatever you want, but the image option needs to be Windows to go. You should leave the file system as NTFS and then just leave everything else there. Once you've done all of that, press start and it'll begin. This may take a bit though, so you'll need some time. It'll give you the option to select what version of Windows you want to install. In this case, we're going to go with Windows 10 Pro. See, wasn't that fun? Once that's done, you'll want to safely remove your USB device. Or, you know, just unplug it like a savage. You want to completely turn your Steam Deck off, and then enter the BIOS menu. Just hold volume up and press the power button. You can either plug it in directly to the Steam Deck using a Type-C converter, or you can plug it in using a dock. It's recommended that you use a dock though. Once you connect it directly, you'll want to mount your Windows to go virtual drive. Yeah, it'll take a little bit to mount, but trust me, it'll be totally worth it. Go over to Boot Manager, and you should see a third drive in there now. That should be your virtual drive. You'll want to go ahead and select it. As you can see there, it's now loading Windows up. I'm just going to go through all of the setup, so I'm going to skip all of this. And there you go. Windows is working. All you have to do is adjust the display and everything works as it should. And that's probably the most important feature of this device right here. And yes, while you've booted off of this virtual drive, the rest of the drive acts as a regular old flash drive that you can access basically within this operating system as well. And yeah, I'm just using that to install my drivers that I downloaded prior. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Why not just use Ventoy? And you know what, that's a very valid point. You could just use Ventoy for a lot of installation media. All you have to do is flash Ventoy onto a flash drive, and then load the flash drive up with a bunch of ISOs. Yes, I would argue Ventoy is all most consumers actually need. But for the professional and perhaps the hardcore tinkers, there are some limitations. For example, older PCs don't really like being booted up from a USB drive. They demand you boot from a CD drive. This is something that IODD devices can do. They can emulate DVD drives in such a way that older PCs can detect it as a CD inserted into your PC. 
and as far as I understand, that's not something Ventoy can do. There's also some other selling points, such as the encryption as well as the on-demand write protection. But those features are more catered towards the professional. But I'm guessing some of my YouTube audience aren't exactly IT professionals. Can I recommend these products to them? It's a very difficult question to answer because it has a lot of features that normal people don't really need or even use. For normal people, I wouldn't really recommend this, but for the computer enthusiasts, or the tinkers, or the Linux users, this is a very nice to have product. Ultimately, this was a very fun product for me to experiment with, especially on the Steam Deck. Setting up a virtual flash drive that has Windows to go to boot up on my Steam Deck to play Destiny 2, it's very radical, albeit not that practical. But that's okay. If you wish to directly support High Tech Low Life, you should check out the link in the description below for our Patreon page. And if you like this video, you should give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And if you want, you can also join my Discord server. As always, links in the description down below for all of this.